of infamous crime against nature. Okay, enjoy it. Whoa, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. To tell her about her, his suicide attempt. Um, and the stuff I sent to her is just not okay either. Well, because this girl lied about her age and convinced me to send her pictures of myself. Like she sent pictures to me too, but it was it was a group effort. You know what I mean? Like YouTube is a website that is known for many things from a place you can get information from to somewhere you can find entertainment and enjoy other cultures from around the world on your own cell phone. But YouTube is also known for its tendency to protect pedophiles and allow them to have a voice here on the platform. From creators sending pictures to kids to some bringing kids to their home to do what they please. Here are some of the worst YouTube predators in the history of the website. I just want to say thank you all for the support, man. Uh, this video was in collaboration with my boy Nautic, so go ahead and subscribe to him. I'm trying to get him up to 500 subscribers, so if you like videos like I make, he makes very similar content as well, so go ahead and support him down there. Uh, we're seven subs off of 1,400, so if you want to go ahead and subscribe and help me get to that goal, please do so. And if you don't want to, that's cool with me, man. Just keep watching the video. I hope you all enjoy the shit. But with all that being said, man, Dex out. Thank you all. Tom Willett, or better known as Feature Man, is an 85-year-old man and a once-beloved YouTuber on the website. With his video on how to eat watermelon going viral, he was known for his cooking recipe-style videos where his audience couldn't really tell if he was senile or just joking. But it turns out that this once-loved figure on the website that has given a lot of people hope and just fun, turns out he is a predator of the worst kind. In the 1970s, Tom was arrested and charged for infamous crimes against nature towards minors. This charge carried three total life sentences and he was found guilty of He sexually assaulted multiple minors at the time and committed oral sex on these minors as well. He was caught and arrested and was later freed due to a technicality in the sentencing, which is just stupid. They released him with a slap on the wrist to live his life after doing these horrible things to kids. He came out with a video when people were first exposing it to talk about the situation, where he was dodging the question originally, where he said that the witness was 18 when he took the stand in court, but failed to say that the witness and or victim was 14 years old at the time. He tried flipping the infamous crimes against nature charge to them just not like homosexuals. And in the 70s, it makes sense they didn't like homosexuals at the time. But what he failed to say was it was a child. The child was assaulted three times at his home. <laughs> the child was assaulted three times. Once at his home, once in a cabin, and once in a drive through movie. This is just one of the victims. Another one was assaulted when he went to learn guitar and was assaulted as well. The entire video that he dropped and then deleted, he was pretty much bragging about getting out of the whole situation on the technicality. And he was acting really smug and he was rubbing it in everyone's face that he was a predator. He got out and he tried to spin the whole situation that it was just because he likes dick, but he failed to say that the dick needs to be under 18 for him to like. He went and also said that he had a clean record over this past 75 years, but that doesn't mean anything when you're messing around with kids. Tom Willett still has his YouTube channel after all this was brought to light, and it's just stupid. Feature Man says the whole situation got brought to light. He's He took a break off YouTube for a while, deleted a good bit of his videos, and he lost a lot of stuff. He has since, as recently as today, actually started uploading again over this la last couple of months, showing off, you know, his recipes and even doing songs on piano, where it's even funnier looking in his comments when everybody's calling him out. At this point, he's just hoping that if he doesn't talk about it, nothing's gonna happen. Romeo Lacrosse was born January 19th, 1989. He is a famous tattoo artist. He's best known for tattooing a bunch of celebrities and a bunch of YouTube celebrities, such as he's tattooed Justin Bieber, Kendrick Lamar, Ariana Grande, and many others. Now, why am I talking about Romeo Lacrosse? He allegedly was talking to underage girls. He was also allegedly sexting, sending pictures, etc. Now, Romeo was on Drum Alert trying to clear his name, but it just didn't work. There's just too many girls coming forward and taking him down, just too many. And so many people that got their tattoos were starting to try to get it removed. Keemster also interviewed a 15-year-old girl that allegedly was talking to Romeo and exposed him. But before that, he was trying to clear his name with Keemstar, and apparently he did not know any of the girls' actual age. That's what he claimed. But this girl that he's talking to said that she was 15 years old, and he did not care. He said that if he's ever in Florida, he will come and drop by. There is some screenshots proving that he was being kind of a creep, I guess you can say. And this girl actually has a video of them two FaceTiming and him showing his private parts to her. Everything got so heavy and Romeo actually ran away to Mexico and came back and he got caught red-handed doing this shit again. This dude does not know how to keep his hands out of the cookie jar. It does not seem that he got in trouble for any of this and his last video was 11 months ago and he did a California Dream official music video and nothing else came out of that. It doesn't show me anything if he got arrested for what he's done and it looks like he just moved on with his life so watch out for freaking romeo dude Frog.
Josiah Mizukami is a 37 year old male who claims that he is God. He was exposed by much bigger YouTubers over his videos here on the platform. His YouTube channel, The Purpose with Josiah Mizukami, he would talk about topics such as pedophilia, zoophilia, and stuff on that nature. He would claim that pedophilia is completely harm free, and he would also say that zoophilia is also completely harm free and that animals can consent. He would have a video with the same guy who caught EDP where he was asked the question if a six year old would want to try touching, would that be legal? Where he says yes and it should, which is just wrong. He would be featured an episode of Predator Poachers who were the same guys who caught EDP where he'd be interviewed by Chet Goldstein where he was calm, cool, and collected talking about his interaction with a 14 year old girl where she was sending him pictures and he would make a comment that her little sister is sexy when she was just five years old or close to it. He would be arrested by police during the arrest where when he asked what he was arrested for, he would say for promoting good. He did lose his YouTube channel so good job YouTube, you did something right for once. Lion Maker, aka Marcus Wilton. He was born July 7th, 1988. He is a Minecraft YouTuber most known for doing videos with Sky Plays Minecraft. He gained popularity through his hide and seek video series, which he began in the summer of 2015. But he decided to do his own thing and left Sky Plays Minecraft, his company, because he was tired of hearing everyone comparing, saying, oh, you're just this guy's friend, you're this guy's friend, you're this guy's friend. So he decided to make his own little crew, and he had a bunch of other YouTubers, and Panda the Page was the specific person I'm going to talk about today. Now, she's a friend of Lion, and they slowly begin getting into a romantic relationship with one another. Which, mind you guys, that she is 14 years old at this point. And he is 27 years old. So that's a big gap. On December 18th, Panda posted my experience with Lion Maker. And they dated each other from the age of 14 to 17 years old. And she was explaining the details from that timeline. Allegedly, he was very abusive towards Panda. Lion Maker allegedly asked her to send her some inappropriate photos of of her but line maker leaked her nudes on the internet and now they're fucking god knows where drummler eventually made a video about about line maker and had panda's mom on the air and basically say everything is fact and true panda eventually sent a lawsuit towards line maker for abuse Lion Maker was put to court, and Lion Maker did say that he did all this. He had zero charges charged on him. He should go back to fucking prison and rot there for all I care. Donzel Owens Jr., better known as Plasma Master Don, was born on September 10th in 1947 and died on December 21st of 2020 of an illness. At the end of Don's life, he was known for a singing of songs on his YouTube channel and many people looked at him as a beacon of hope in one of the darkest times in human history. A sweet old man living his best life, but this would change when on Reddit and brought to the eye of the public by YouTuber Nick Crowley that Don was a child predator and a registered sex offender here in the state of Ohio. He was charged for sexual imposition where he touched the genitals of a child against his will. His YouTube channel is still up and it's one of the creepiest things to look at because you can see the daily life of somebody who preyed on children the comments are also thinking the same way about the whole situation this is also brought up the fact that people want to say that old people are innocent which they're not you you can never look at an old person and go yeah they're innocent because of their age many people do terrible things in their life but this is one of the worst things you can do to somebody next to murder and rape Charlotte Zhao, better known as Jim Pop was born November 18th 1992 he also started his career on Minecraft and he also meant Sky does Minecraft and was part of his crew for a very short amount of time. So Jim Bop was sick and tired of everybody saying that he's also the friend of Sky Plays Minecraft and he only got big because of Sky Plays Minecraft, which that's kind of true. And Jim Bob's content's kind of bland. But he did decide to leave and he left the company of Sky Plays Minecraft and started his own journey with his YouTube career. But slowly his views started declining and declining. August 10, 2016 would be his last video ever uploaded. September 9, 2016, a YouTube news channel uploaded a video exposing Jim Bop of allegedly talking to a minor and getting arrested and have some heavy jail time. He was talking to a six year old girl and asking for lewd photos and to buy more revealing clothing from her parents. Parents got a little bit, a little bit weirded out from this because it's not what she usually wears. She, she just doesn't wear them outside. She doesn't go outside and wear them. She just leaves them by her computer. Jim Buck was asking the girl 
to come visit him in his state and ask his parents to go on a vacation so they can meet up with one another. And it turned out not to work, so he was saying, I'm just going to come to you, and then it's going to keep going and going. And the parents secretly got into their call and recorded some of the audio. The really crazy part is the parents got the FBI involved with Jim Bob. The authorities, months on end, were monitoring their chats, and they got all they needed to arrest Jim Bob. They arrested him in August of 2016. He was in prison for seven years, and he's getting out this year, May 30th, 2023. He will be released from prison, and from this recording, it is currently June 16th, and he's been out of jail for about last month. He just got out. Austin Jones is a 30-year-old male from Chicago, Illinois, and was known for his singing ability and the remixing of popular songs such as Fall Out Boy, Sugar, We're Going Down Swinging. He was followed by a lot of underage girls and was building up a following here on YouTube for his talent and his ability. But he was exposed for targeting underage fans sexually where he was caught asking his fans for videos of them twerking. He would use manipulative tactics to try to pressure these girls into doing what he wants for them. If the girl did not know how to twerk, he would send them a video on how to do it himself and then he wrote them a script on what to say. The script would read out, say your name, your your age, then shake your ass 30 seconds, and say that this ass is blank years old. If the child did not want to do it, he would give them pushback and he would try to pressure them into doing it by saying that they're really not his biggest fans and he would be, and it would be a shame if you would have to find somebody else to do it, acting like he was disappointed. He would end up getting caught for this and he would be sentenced to 10 years in prison. Kiwis was born January 3rd of 1997 and is 25 years old. Kiwis has built up a subscriber count of over 3 million by doing Fortnite videos, but this wasn't always the case. Kiwis used to be a part of the trick shotting scene over at Call of Duty when he first started YouTube. Kiwis would join groups such as Era, Red Reserve, and Sword Gaming, and there he'd be introduced to a ton of names that are still known today, such as Nuda and Tensor. But later on in Kiwis' career, it would come out to be exposed by Keemstar that he was being very inappropriate with an underage girl and was confronted by Keemstar, the mother, and the girl herself in a now deleted video. He would admit it in the video to sending pictures and receiving pictures from this girl and then later on he would create a famous apology video trying to defend himself where he would blame the girl for lying but failed to say that they were doing this while he was 19 years old and in the apology video he did well to make it seem that he was just way too trusting as a girl instead of actually saying that he is a bad person. Nothing really happened to Kiwis after the situation to begin with. It kind all just faded away until after he was verified on Twitter he made a post and that's when all hell broke loose it seemed at that point everybody remembered what Kiwis did and that with a video from Keystar talking about him being the one who got away it seemed finally something happened and it reflects in his views where a channel at his size could barely get 50k views that is an issue Kiwis is someone who didn't really receive any consequences when he first did it but after getting exposed again he took a break and it came back like nothing happened and it seems that Kiwis may not really be able to bounce back to the fame that he had before. Brian Moreland, or better known as EDP445, is one of the most recognizable figures on YouTube. From both his appearance to the things that he says, he is one of the biggest memes to ever come out on the platform and still has countless memes running around as of today. He had a lot of the community support when it came to YouTube and actually had most of YouTube band together when they refused to give him his million subscriber play button. He was at the top of the game and for a while considered to be the face of the website, but this would all change when Predator Poachers would set up a sting operation to catch EDP red-handed trying to meet up with a 13-year-old girl, where in his darkest hour, he would still create countless memes about the entire situation, the most popular one being that he came to get a cupcake. The text messages that he sent to the decoy account were messed up to say the least, from dick pics to literal pictures of his shit, this incident would lead to his accounts being deleted. He would try to come back on TikTok and he would gain a million followers before he was deleted again, and many people speculate that the only reason he was deleted in the first place was all the backlash that TikTok was receiving because they refused to do it before. There was also an incident this year where he would come out and say that the whole thing was fake and that he was auditioning for a role in a movie and that the predator catchers were actually directors. He used screenshots from Gmail as evidence even though it was clearly fake and the only reason that EDP was not arrested was because the catchers failed to inform police about the sting operation so he was able to walk away free from the whole thing. This is something that they learned from later on when they caught Josiah Mizukami. Many lad used to be a part of the Vanos crew, a group of popular creators with millions of subscribers between them and eventually he left the group because he wanted to be his own creator. I also, I'm also breaking off into a solo YouTuber because it's a lot more fun. He didn't want to be known as one of Vanoss' friends, which is totally okay to do your own thing, be your own person. And he expressed how much happier it made him. But his attitude towards the group since leaving was something to be concerned about. He doesn't play Gmod anymore. That's all he does. 
question done. Or him saying that he was kicked out of all the group chats and then immediately backtracking that. To then throwing shots at them over his meme streams about the games that they were playing and uploading. I'll be right. I also have no idea. They're still playing Gmod. Damn. After all this time, they're still hey, playing hey. Gmod? I mean, they kicked me out of all their chats, so I have no idea what the hell they're doing, so. Perfectly balanced. Still, that, be, yo. I wasn't kicked. Oh my god, alright. So, just to clear up any drama, um, I'm going off and doing my own thing. And then oh, I saw her face! Alright. Just to clear up some shit, uh, I wasn't kicked. Uh, they, all they did was play Fortnite and Gmod and then talk shit about other YouTubers. So I said, fuck that. Uh, I broke away from that group. I'm doing my own thing. I've never felt better. I'm my community stronger than ever. I'm pulling more views than ever. And I'm personally a lot more happy as a human. And the biggest one between him and the group was his altercation with Terrorizer. Through a tweet that Terrorizer came out with, pretty much exposing that Minnie was lying in his own tweet about it. With the response of, my dog just died. That's what Minnie Lad said. Terrorizer's response was, Craig, my dad just died. And that doesn't give me an excuse to mistreat others. But after the back and forth on Twitter between Terrorizer, Minnie Lad, and Nogla, just everybody going back and forth there. It was kind of like a chicken fight. This right here was the first major hit to Minnie Lad's reputation before the biggest scandal of his career would come out. Mini Lad was involved in a controversy related to grooming and inappropriate behavior towards underage children. He was also accused of manipulating two girls by the name of Haley and Ash with threats of suicide and making these underage girls feel like his life was in their hands. Guilt. Just make me feel guilty. And not come out about him after fucking years of holding this shit in. Just years of holding this shit in and being so terrified of just what he would do to himself. And I felt like I was... His life was in my hands. I was 16, 17. Just a young fucking girl with her own fucking problems who felt responsible for another person's life because I was scared. I was fucking scared. And he knew that. He took advantage of that. And I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed. And with the continuation of abusing mental health and suicide attempts to keep these girls from exposing him for the monster that he truly is, and when these girls were talking about exposing him, he used another girl in to try to talk to him and just say, well, mention my suicide attempt. See, is his tweet. I'm going to show the screenshots again. This is from someone I will not name, but this is at the time where she thought she was helping Craig because she was also a victim of his manipulation, and he would use suicide attempts on, like telling her he wanted to kill himself to keep her quiet and she decided to share me like share with me these screenshots and it's a very brave thing to do and i'm gonna respect her privacy by not naming who she is she basically was told by craig to go to ash um one of the other girls who came out who dealt with way worse way worse um to keep them quiet and then telling them that if they would to come out they'd be killing thousands of people who look up to them just how if ash ever came up about this she would be killing she would be the person who's responsible for killing thousands of people because of if people found out who he was and fans who count on his videos found out about him they would kill themselves how much of a fucking massive ego can you have how much of a fucking disgusting human being can you be and that right there is just messed up we can also confirm that these girls were underage when he actually made contact with them and he was extending explicit pictures to these girls underneath the umbrella of mental health he even admitted to it and then fled the country he claims that it wasn't for that but as soon as you get exposed you run to another country i don't know he could have it could have just been coincidence but I don't think so. And the fact that he admitted to sending these pictures to kids and using his mental health to keep people silent and then admitted to it in the past, it's just, it's just messed up. He has also been proven to lie and he uses manipulation of mental health to make himself look like the victim. You can see in his apology video where he spins a narrative to make him look like he was mentally unstable, didn't mean to do it, and that he doesn't deserve any of the consequences. But after telling somebody that if they come out about the abuse that they have received and telling them that it'll kill thousands of people, that doesn't like, that doesn't sound like somebody who is underneath a mental stress like that. It's more saying like, hey, I know what I did was wrong. Just don't come out about it. He is actively manipulating people. The actions of YouTube throughout the entire thing, the actions of YouTube throughout the entire thing have just been 
very sad. The fact that he is still on the platform and he has an audience of millions of people and he is still talking to people is kind of crazy. He needs to be looked at and addressed in further detail by YouTube, I believe. Neil Mohan, you need to make this decision. The fact that he is still able to talk to the audience that he has built up and used the power to abuse is just sick. And the fact that he's still, he can still get away with this needs to be addressed in further detail from somebody else. I am still in the belief, and I believe many others are, that many lads should have been banned after this came out and after him admitting to it. The fact that YouTube doesn't do it and over the years, it's just kind of proven that he is the protected predator.